This is a podcast of the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Richard Cornell tells us about his research on autoimmunity. Hello Richard. Hi Anna. What is autoimmunity? So uh, autoimmunity is um, a situation when the, the immune system, which is normally designed to attack pathogens, um, attacks our own body. So it's sort of friendly fire sort of situation really. And um, <coughs> autoimmune diseases are, uh, are kind of divided into those which affect um, specific organs, where you lose the function of specific organs. So examples of that would be things like um, early onset diabetes, where the insulin producing uh, cells in the pancreas are destroyed, or rheumatoid arthritis, um, where it attacks the joints. Or, uh, um, and then there are systemic ones, where the whole body is attacked, and there'd be things like systemic lupus. Um, so you have sort of generalised effects from those. And um, it's, it's distinct from allergy, which sometimes confuses people. So allergies are where you have an abnormal response against something outside the body, such as a house dust mite or something like that. So it's, it's not the same as allergy, it's where the body attacks itself. How do autoimmune diseases develop? To understand that, you've got to understand that the immune system generates cells at random in order to fight pathogens. And, uh, in, and it needs to be able to do that at random so that it can adapt to any of the pathogens that might arise at, at, you know, in, in the environment. And so because it's a random process, there's a chance that you will develop cells that will also react against yourself, just as they would against the pathogens. And so there needs to be control mechanisms to prevent those cells from reacting against you. And so autoimmune diseases occur typically when two things arise. One, you've got to have the, the abnormal cell, uh, which will arise by chance. And then you've got to have some defect in the normal control mechanisms that to, which are there in all of us to, to prevent those cells from damaging us. Um, so that's the basic uh, answer. Um, in addition, um, sometimes we, uh, in, in fighting off particular pathogens, we get a sort of cross-reaction between the pathogen and our cells. So for example, in, in rheumatic fever, where you, you can have a, a, a bacterium causing a sore throat, you can afterwards get an, in, an autoimmune disease affecting the heart due to a cross-reactivity. And the same is true for a disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which causes paralysis, sometimes affects young people. And quite a number of those people have had an infection in their gut from another bacterium. And there's a cross-reaction between the pathogen and the nerve cells. And why do people have different susceptibility to these diseases? Some people um, um, get um, uh, uh, susceptibility because of factors in the environment. So those would be things like the, the, the bacteria that I've already called, that mentioned. And sometimes they would be um, uh, other factors in the environment which would change our proteins to, to uh, in a way, trick our immune system into thinking they were foreign. So uh, an example would be sunlight in patients with lupus that can trigger off inflammation. And smoking in some people can release anti uh, proteins in the lungs that the immune system then thinks are foreign and trigger off an autoimmune disease. So the environment's one factor. And then there's uh, our, our inheritance, you know, our genes. Uh, there's increasing recognition that, that our genetic makeup, which in differs you know, very widely in terms of our ability to fight infections, and that's probably because natural selection is very strong because historically you know, we have and still in many parts of the world, we are um, infectious diseases are the major cause of death. Um, uh, our immune systems have, be, have evolved uh, in lots of different ways to fight infection, so we're all very different. And some of those mechanisms which, which we think may enable us to fight infections better could also predispose us to getting autoimmune disease. And in addition to that, there are random differences between us, which also probably affect the, uh, the immune system because it's very complicated. And can this research help us design better treatments? Yeah, definitely. So if you, if you understand uh, uh, the triggers to autoimmune disease, then, then, you, then there's, every reason why you, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to stop them. And of course, if you can identify those people who are susceptible, perhaps because they've got susceptible genes or something like that, then, then, uh, or environmental exposure, then you can perhaps prevent it. And, uh, and then if you can't step in at an early stage, then you can still step in later. And if you understand the downstream consequences, then you can block the autoimmune process. And of course, the idea is to try and block it specifically so that you prevent 
the reactivity against yourself, but you still preserve this ability to, to fight off uh, foreign pathogens. What are the most important lines of research that have developed over the past five or ten years? I think the most important thing it must be the human genome project and, and access to you know, the wealth of genetic information. Um, because that allows us to look into, uh, to understand individual susceptibility, or is it, it's beginning to at any rate. But uh, in the last 10 years, it's also allowed us to start to look in a lot more detail at, um, at how the individual genes work and the proteins work, and that's allowed us to dissect the, the pathways in much more detail. So I think that's probably the most important thing. Uh, other things that are important are our increasing ability to make new you know, uh, um, therapies, biological agents, you know, like the TNF therapy, um, and to conduct um, drug screening protocols with, you know, new, with uh, small molecules and so on. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Most of what we do in my lab is very basic research. Um, and um, I mean, it's important to understand because we're interested in autoimmune diseases, but it's also important because if you understand what goes wrong, then you, you have, by definition, you have to understand what, you know, what, what the normal processes are. And that's important for understanding the flip side of autoimmunity, which is how, you under, uh, you know, how we generate good response against pathogens, which, of course, in a, in a worldwide sense, is much the most important um, um, uh, thing to understand in immunology. And so it's important for understanding how you make better vaccines and how you fight off infections and so on. Um, and then in, in respect of the autoimmune diseases themselves, they're important because about 2% uh, of the population have those diseases. Many of them are, um, are, are very long-term and quite debilitating. So although it's only 2%, it, it figures large in medical practice. Many of them are also diseases which affect <coughs> young people, um, things like insulin-dependent diabetes, you know, um, uh, multiple sclerosis. And many of them are, are diseases of the elderly um, and, uh, and also extremely debilitating, rheumatoid arthritis, for example. So they're, they're very important diseases to try and get to grips with. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? A lot of the basic research uh, is identifying pathways that are involved in the immune response. And that work uh, is important for our lab, but also for lots of the other labs around the uh, around the department and in the division. And we also collaborate with lots of the people working in genetics. And so we assist them by identifying the pathways that are defective. So that's how that works. And then I'm also a clinician. I work in the renal unit. And a lot of the diseases I see there are, are autoimmune diseases. And I collaborate with lots of the rheumatologists and other physicians around the hospital. So that's the sort of clinical side of it. And then I have a, a program with Professor Simon Davis at the Weatherall Institute, uh, who, and the two of us are trying to develop antibodies uh, which will target the uh, regulatory mechanisms in the immune system to try and turn on those things which would normally dampen down the immune response uh, and control autoimmune diseases. So that's a sort of therapy side of things. So it's sort of lab stuff, clinical stuff. And and then finally trying to develop new treatments. So that's a, that's a translational spectrum for me. Does that answer the question? Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <coughs> Thanks, Anna.